So, um, so you're welcome to the next part of this lecture. So we are looking at the fourth part, right, which is the half of a circle. And I, I said that whenever you see this, right, the argument of z minus z naught over z minus z1 is equal to theta, then theta like the zero and pi describes the half of a circle. The question is how, how do we know that this is really the half of a circle? I will mention two things or three that you need to keep in mind, right? So the most important one I have sketched here, whenever you have a circle, the angles that are subtended at the circumference, right, of a circle in the same segment are always equal, right? So on that side of the segment, the, the angles are subtended will always be equal. So that is very important. You need to keep that in mind. Now the other one is this. Okay, so now let me get rid of this and I will show that this is Indeed, this describes the arc of a circle. Now, we know that if um, the arc of z over z1 or z1 over z2 would be equal to this, I can write as the arc argument of z and z naught minus argument of the denominator, right? z minus z1, and that is equal to theta. Alright? So now we can let let this guy represent something that represents another angle. So let argument of z and z naught represent some angle less or alpha. And um, let the argument of z minus z1 represent another angle less called that theta. Okay? Which means that alpha minus beta is equal to theta. So this implies alpha minus beta is equal to the Theta. Okay? This is just from manipulating this equation. We have it done in it. But note that this here is a half line. You see that? So this is actually a half line, like let me sketch it here. So, so suppose you know z naught is here, okay, and then let z1 be there. Okay? This is a half line making an angle of alpha with the positive x axis. So this is like it's a half line that is going this way, making an angle of what? Alpha. Okay? That is this guy. And this guy is also a half line from the point z1, making an angle of what? Beta. Alright? So this is, you know, mostly a half line, but it's making an angle of what? Beta. Well, how do I know that they intersect? Right? This is positive. Theta is positive from how I set it up, which means that this guy which is alpha has to be greater than this. Alright? So the angle alpha there has to be greater than this. They are not equal, so they will be parallel. They have to intersect at some point. So they intersect here. Now, I'm going to show that I'm going to show that the point where they intersect, if we call it uh, gamma, is actually equal to the angle of theta here. So let's show that, and that will help us to understand why this is an arc. Okay? So here, we're going to use the fact that if you sum the angles in the triangle, it's equal to 180 degrees, right? Um, so let me do this. It's equal to 180 degrees, so that uh, gamma plus beta plus the angle here will be pi minus alpha, right? So this, this is pi minus alpha, that's the angle here. So if I have all of that, that should be equal to 180 degrees pi, right? So this implies that gamma plus beta pi and pi cancels out, right? This is equal to zero. This implies that the angle gamma is actually equal to alpha minus beta, right? But from this equation, we just show that alpha minus beta is equal to theta, which implies that this is equal to theta. So, in fact, the angle that is subtended over here is equal to the angle theta. So, this equation is telling us, right, which is the same as this, is telling us that the half lines intersect at a point, let's call that P, okay, P, and the angle that is subtended at is theta. Okay, this theta is fixed. Note that alpha and beta will be changing based on Z. As z is changing, alpha and beta are changing, but this is always fixed. 
okay? Which means that this point here, the locus of this is moving. It's moving along some line, okay? Now, but the angle at which this are turned is always fixed. It's an equal angle. But we know that for circles, all right, for circles, when they are on the same, in the same segment, okay, it doesn't matter where you are, when they are in the same segment, the angle that is at 10 is always equal. So because the angle is always fixed at theta, all right, we know that this point here has to make an arc of the circle. Okay, because this is fixed, all right, we know that where they intersect, Irrespective of, even though this is changing and this is changing, the angle at which they subtend is always fixed at theta. And because we know that it's a property for angles on an arc of the circle, we know that this point here must make an arc of the circle. Alright, which is given by this. Therefore, whenever you see this, this actually represents the arc of the circle. Alright? From um, that passes through the point Z0 and Z1, and they subtend an angle of theta at the circumference and the arc of the circle. Okay? Good. So, often you will be given a question like this. Let's try a few of them. A question like this, and you are asked to, um, to sketch to sketch the locus of point represented by that. Okay, now from what we know, we, we can sketch it because we we'll know our Z0 and Z1, we we'll know the angle. So we can sketch, but often you want to prove, this is important, you want to show geometrically, all right, and when, after you have done your sketch, that indeed the angle that is suspended here is actually equal to theta. That is the main problem. Okay? So let's look at, um, let's do that, um, some examples of this. Okay? I have um, a few examples that we can use to illustrate. To illustrate. So here, Example. Okay, sketch the locus of Z4. So let's look at this one. I demand Z minus 6, Z minus 2 is equal to pi to 4. Um, once we are done with that, we can look at this one. If I still have time, uh, z z minus four i is equal to pi two. Okay. So let's let's do this one. Geometrically, this makes sense. This is 
So let's again, as I did before, let this be an angle alpha, let this angle be beta. Okay? Now, before we come to the diagram from this equation, from here, all right, we know that this can be written as R z minus 6 minus argument z minus 2 is equal to R 4, just, just from this equation, all right? So if I let this be alpha, right, z minus 6 will be equal to alpha, and if I let argument z minus 2 to be equal to beta, all right? Then of course, just from the equation, I know alpha minus beta is equal to r over 4, all right? Where my alpha there, of course, is that half line, making an angle of alpha, beta here is a, this is that half line, making an angle of um, beta, okay? From t, from 2, 0. So, so all of this is from the equation that is given, okay? And we have our sketch here. So the point is we want to show, right, that, you know, the angle alpha minus beta will always be um, equal to this. So this is actually straightforward because of my initial setup. So it's easy to see that, you know, that's indeed the case. So from, from the diagram, okay, from the figure, from the diagram, we have gamma plus beta plus again in these two triangles this guy here will be um, i minus alpha and that is equal to i i's cancel out so that gamma plus beta minus alpha is zero so that gamma indeed is alpha minus beta and from the equation it is i over four so this is equal to i over four all right so so that's you know that makes sense, that's all cool, and it's kind of straightforward because of the initial setup I, 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 um, I use. Let's look at the second example, it will give you uh, something to think about. So, the second example says that we have the arguments, we have arguments Z, um, B says that we have attained argument z I think it's z minus 4i is equal to i over 2 okay um, you should have it somewhere here z over z minus 4i is equal to i over 2 alright so this is that's okay so this is argument if you like this is z z minus 0 right this is z minus if you like this is z minus 0 plus Right. Okay. So my points, the two points are, if you like, your z not there is zero zero, right? That's point. And then your other point, z one, will be zero, and the y one will be So you have, you have um, zero zero. That's the z not is here. And then the other point is at what? It's at Four, so here, so four is here. All right. Now the other thing I forgot to mention is that um, if you have z one and z not, or z not and z one, and they make an arc, the arc is always traversed in the counterclockwise direction. That is important. Okay, the arc is traversed in the counterclockwise direction this way. Okay. So so because we are measuring the angle. So this is always the case. So this says that I have two points. They have to make an arc. Oh, this is two. They have to make an arc such that the angle that is subtended by the half lines will, will make an angle of pi over, pi over two. All right? So again, I'm going to go like that. OK? So that is, that is basically the sketch of that nose. But the angle is at 10, so if I sketch, if I have a line, the half line from here, the half line from there, okay, the half line is at an angle of 90 degrees, I, 
I want you to see that. Now, because it's a pen and angle of pi over 2, remember we said that if you have a circle, and this is a diameter, then the angle subtended by the diameter is an angle of pi over 2, 90 degrees. So basically, this means that this up there is really a semicircle. So this is actually a semi semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-semi-sem